Hello everybody and welcome to the last part of learning sprite animation. So you watched my last tutorial, basically in the animation class, we learned how to actually create the animations and crop out the animations and draw those animations to the screen. So uh, let's work on actually the initialize method, which is the last thing we need to work on. So what we're going to be storing is the position we're going to be needing the amount of frames uh, I'll just name this frames and uh, we can we'll actually specify the switch frame right here so we're going to set switch frame equal to 60 and we're going to put that this position is equal to position and the amount of frames is equal to frames so we're just making a copy of it so then we can in, in turn draw it to the screen so now let's go straight to our player class so what we're going to be doing is making a uh, instance of the animation class and I'm going to put I'm going to name this player animation and create the animation class right there so play in player initialize we're going to do player animation sorry dot initialize so we're gonna store the players position and we're gonna store the um the amount of frames so we're simply gonna do this by doing new vector 2 and this the frames are 4 by 4 now this isn't the best way to do the frames but I'm just gonna be doing this way to accommodate for the tutorial just to get you guys the gist of the tutorial so we have we've initialized so for our load content we we load our player image but we have to in turn get our image equal to, um into the player and into the animation class so we can we there's many ways we could do this we could either make a load content method or we can create another property um called our image or animation image and we'll put a set property because that's all we need to do and we'll put image is equal to value sorry so if we go back to player sorry I need to set this back so if we go back to player right here after we load our player image we just have to do player animation dot animation image equals to player image so we've stored the player image into our animation class or in our animation instance and sorry if you guys aren't familiar with classes but C sharp is an object oriented language so if you you need to actually know classes to program in C sharp so let's look at our update right now and one thing I forgot to tell you is that we have to um, use one more thing and that is the input and normally you would have an input state class or input manager or something to handle the input but for this tutorial for this tutorial sake we won't do it so for the update we're just gonna do player animation dot update and then we're going to do player animation dot draw now we're just going to set active to true just to show you guys uh, how it's going to work so we need to go to game1.cs and we're going to delete all the stuff this is from the last tutorial so we're going to create a new instance of our player class So we've created our instance, so we want to initialize player. So player dot initialize. So we've initialized that. We want to load our actual content. So we're gonna do player dot load content and then put in the variable content in there. So the same content variable we used to actually load our content before, we just pass in the parameters since we were making a copy of it to use this functionality. So if we ex delete all the stuff here, we do player dot update, and we pass in game time. 
same game time value is here and for the sprite bash to draw make sure you have sprite bash dot begin and sprite bash dot end so we're gonna put player dot draw and if everything goes as planned it should animate so let's see what we get so if you look on the screen your your player should be animating it should be scrolling through the different frames so it doesn't really look smooth and stuff yet it looks like it's moving at an uncontrollable rate so uh, let us go back to our code to see if we could actually fix that so if we set our switch frame to a higher value let's set our switch frame to 100 let's see if our image will move at a slower rate so see the higher the number you give for switch frame then the slower the animation moves this is because it has to count that much higher in order to switch the frame so it has to wait that much longer before it switches frames so uh, the faster you want it the lower the number you put for switch frame and the slower you want it the higher you put for switch frame so say you want to make uh, a walking animation and a, a running animation you could just um, put a higher value for switch frame if you want it to show a walking animation and if you want it to look as though it's running then you set a lower value for switch frame so it looks as though the legs are moving at a faster rate so now that we've got our animation down now we have to actually handle input so we've learned about keyboard input already but we're going to be learning how to do this to manipulate to cycle through each of the frames so if we go to our player what we're going to do is that we're going to set at the top player animation active equals false okay no actually we're gonna set this to true sorry so what we're gonna do right here is that we're gonna put what we wanna do is that we actually want to make another vector to called um, current frame as well and this is just a temp so a temporary so we can say temp current frame I guess so this is just temporary that's a temporary value right now so just to when we initialize it we could just set it to vector to zero so if we look at our update right here we want to do if we want to actually work for the keys first and I forgot to actually make our key states so keyboard state we wanna put key state so we're gonna put at the top keyboard key state is equal to keyboard dot get state so we can actually get keyboard input so we say that if key state dot is key down keys dot down then we want to actually move the player down now how do we move the player down well we have to set the current uh, frame equal we have to set the current frame equal to a certain value so then it moves down now uh... there's multiple ways that we could go about this we could do if we go back to our animation we've set it that we start from the current frame x and the current frame y well we could do this if we would like to we could do times frame height right there and then what this will do is that if we instead of setting the current frame y and stuff to the initial value because it could get confusing that you could be like if I'm drawing left yeah I know 0 plus 48 is equal to 48 and if I want to draw the right animation then I have to figure out what's 48 plus 48 and that's equal to 96 so if I want to draw the right animation I have to start drawing from value 96 now what's 96 plus 48 and that can get a bit confusing if you if you really don't want to do math in your head so what we can do is that we could say that this frame the down animations is zero left animations is one right animations is two and up animations is three so it's sort of like an array zero one, so zero one two three so and because we're gonna do that we're gonna figure out where we should start drawing from so um, if current frame y is equal to 0, what's 0 times 48? That is equal to 0. 
so it knows that current frame Y should start should be at the pixel zero. So say we're pressing the left button. Um, if we're pressing the left button, then current frame Y should be equal to one. So then, if we do one times forty-eight, that equals to forty-eight. So we'll know how to start drawing from there. And if we're pressing the right, then current frame Y should be equal to two. What's two times forty-eight? That's ninety-six, and then we'll start drawing the right animation. So that is a better way to go about it.